Hello everyone. So, are you afraid of sharks? Don't worry, because the guest that I'm going to talk with today is the marine biologist and the shark diver. She encountered a lot of sharks and also have tips for you if you ever encounter sharks. With the name Andriana Fragola. Hi Andriana, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? And you are right now in Hawaii, right? Yes, in Hawaii. Okay, that's really cool. That's really cool uh, place. So, I want to ask you uh, several stuff about mostly sharks and mar uh, and uh, marine uh, ecosystem, right? So, cool. let let's first talk about your um, your account from TikTok because <laughs> you're really famous in TikTok, and you want to know more about like um, your account first. Then your account is sharing about your experience underwater and how you handle situation when you face shark. Um, all things about shark. So, what is the reason behind this? So, I really love using social media to be able to explain to people just different things that they probably would never think about in their entire life. Like, a lot of people don't really think about sharks or anything to a deeper level with them as far as anything about their behavior. Everyone's just scared of them, you know? So, I think having a platform where you can kind of educate people and show them different you know interactions seeing people coexist with them is so important for wanting to protect them and actually for their conservation but i also love just teaching people simple tricks because we never know if you're in the ocean you could always run into a shark and there's a few things that are definitely beneficial to know as far as like how to interact and what you could do that's like definitely a bad thing or definitely a, a good thing if you do see one better ways to behave and hopefully that would lead to safer interactions between people and sharks so um you want to like uh, make things clear about sharks and also human rights so like safe uh, interaction for that yes. okay and you has uh you you have uh, 1.6 million viewers and 53.9 million likes <laughs> on the tiktok account so, uh, what do you think uh, that people follow you, especially on TikTok? <laughs> I think that people really like just, I don't know, the, the cool shots that I'm able to get because of the unique experience that I'm so lucky to be able to have with these sharks and just with the ocean in general. And I think really being able to feel like you're being immersed in that experience and seeing it firsthand and actually learning about it. I do think a lot of people like to follow for that reason. And I will also share content just about really crazy moments that I've had. And I think people really react to that and they can really see these really unique moments that I'm able to have in the ocean with sharks, without sharks, just all over traveling and how amazing the ocean really can be. And as a shark diver, um, can you tell us more about shark behavior? Because all we know shark is, uh, you know, a dangerous predator, dangerous animal under uh, by the ocean. So can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I think a lot of people just think that sharks just go around eating everything regardless of, you know, what they are, what the animal is. They just go around biting things and eating anything that that crosses their path. But they're actually very important for the ocean ecosystem. They function as, you know, the top level predator. They're eating things that are actually injured and dying. So because they're actually going after the things that are struggling or injured, because it's a lot easier for them to hunt, they don't want to have to chase down something that's you know perfectly healthy. But because they're going after the things that are injured, it actually keeps the ocean free of disease and it helps to balance everything out. So if you were in an ecosystem where all the sharks were gone, it would cause a really big imbalance between all of the meso predators and all of the grazers. It just basically has this huge trophic cascade and it could be really, really bad for the ocean. So. As those top level predators, they really regulate everything and in turn keep different ecosystems like the coral reefs healthy. And coral reefs actually absorb a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Very, very important to have healthy reefs. And if you don't have the sharks, you actually are degrading your reefs and that can eventually lead to lower air quality, things like that. So they have a huge impact and they're very different than the perception, obviously Jaws and movies and media. Anytime you hear about a shark in the in the media, it's never a good thing. They're never like, oh wow, this shark was so beautiful. It's gonna be something like shark attack, shark in encounter, something very scary. And every time someone goes in the water, just like almost guarantee that they're gonna be see a shark. There is going to be a shark there, but they're not necessarily going to see it. So that really proves how patient they are and how they're not really just going around and eating everything. If they wanted to, we wouldn't be 
surviving every time we go in the ocean. The shark attacks are so rare. And there's only about uh, five to 10 human fatalities from shark attacks every year out of the 7.7 .7 billion people on earth. So that's a pretty small percentage out of all of us. All right. And how about, um, you've mentioned a lot of like um, a encounter with uh, sharks and also different kind of shark. And is there any most memorable experience that you have um, that you when you meet the sharks? Yeah, I think uh, one of my there's so many I've had a lot of really good experiences because I've been so fortunate. But I think one of my favorites, uh, we had a dive with a bunch of my best girlfriends. We're all women divers, which I love um, sometimes sharing the space with just women. It's so amazing. And we actually had five different tiger sharks and the day was just so amazing we weren't expecting it to be such a crazy day and we had the sharks hanging around with us for we started super early in the morning it was probably like eight hours where they were just hanging around in the area coming up to us being really interactive and it was very very special because of the sharks a lot of the sharks are ones that we know from years of working with them so we'll see them throughout the season and then they'll leave for a few months and then we won't see them. So we were able to see them again the next year and they had this beautiful interaction with us. They were all staying with us all day and the girls that I was in the water with were all really, really good friends. So it was just such an amazing experience to be able to share the water with uh, some of my favorite sharks and then some of my favorite people. Okay, that's must be very, um... I call it like memorable moment for you, yes. you and your uh, favorite people as well. And so let's move on to like um, to Indonesia. So Indonesia, as you know, that Indonesia is a American country, which some of the countries in Southeast Asia are also surrounded by the sea. Um, right. As a professional drivers, uh, divers, so. This like um, it might not so often to encounter sharks in Indonesia, but if we do actually encounter uh, the shark, can you tell us the do's and don'ts for the people, yeah. uh, especially here in Indonesia and in Southeast Asia? <laughs> yes, yeah, I've actually I've been to um, Indonesia. I haven't been in a really long time. I'm actually planning to go back in September. I went to Raja Ampat for a month, and it was amazing. And we did, we were lucky. We got to see sharks while we were there too. That was so long ago, the last time I went there. But I am planning a trip to go again this year. And I'm actually inviting just girls that want to sign up for the trip um, where they can come and join as well. So they can interact with the animals there and just see the amazing wildlife that you guys have. And as far as encountering sharks, you know, it's definitely very possible, especially, you know, in an area where there's, you're surrounded by water, you're on different islands. And so the biggest thing, if you're ever swimming or snorkeling and you do see a shark, you want to remain calm. It's like the opposite of what everyone wants to do, right? So just trying to remain calm and huge number one thing, just look at them, give them eye contact. If you actually look at them in the eyes, they will see you as much more of a aware predator versus someone that's turning around, not paying attention, you know, like not looking at them, not totally unaware. You wanna make sure you face them, give them your, your, you know, the front of your body. They're really intelligent. They can tell, they can tell where your eyes are. They're very smart. So giving them the eye contact is number one thing that I would say. And then if they are, you know, coming up or being a little bit more curious, you wanna make sure you're not splashing. If you start splashing because you're nervous or you're freaking out, that loud splashing noise and just the vibrations of that, to them, it feels kind of like an animal that's injured or dying because usually when things are in the water that are splashing a lot, they are typically injured. And so you don't want to come off as injured. You want to, you know, pretend you're this apex predator, believe it, think that you are. I always tell people if they ever see a shark and they're super nervous, like fake it till you make it, the confidence, try to keep the confidence up even if you are nervous. And if it depends, it gets really nuanced depending on the situation, if it is a larger shark or a smaller shark, but you can use your fin if you're wearing fins or if you have like a GoPro or something, if they are continuing to come up to you after you're making eye contact and you're remaining calm and kind of standing your ground, uh, you can actually stretch out your fin. You wanna to try to avoid using your hands if you can, but if you extend your fin or the GoPro pole, that's really great because you're able to create space by using something that's not your physical body. 
And most sharks, if they see you, especially as soon as you make eye contact with them, they're gonna want to leave you alone. They're pretty um, avoidant when it comes to that type of stuff. But if you do get one that is coming up and being more in investigative, wants to check you out, that eye contact fins out really does help. And that kind of creates a barrier. And if they do want to bump into something, it's going to be, you know, plastic or not a part of your actual body, which is, you know, better. So those are some of the main tips that I would say. And if you're in an area where you think you might encounter sharks, try not to wear bright colors. They actually are more attracted to bright yellows, whites, oranges, bright pinks, because they see in contrast. So they don't actually see the exact color. But when you're in the ocean, you have the blue or the, the greener background, and then you have something bright white or bright yellow. That's way more eye-catching to them, especially if it's something small like your fins or maybe just like your top, like a rash guard top. Those brighter colors will get them a little bit more interested. They might come up a little bit closer just to investigate what that is. So I would avoid wearing those colors as well if you're you know, anywhere in an area where you think you might run into a shark. So thank you very much, Andriana. Um, and so uh, you're saying that you're going to uh, South Asia, right? Especially in, to Indonesia, <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> so if you do, um, please have fun. Enjoy your yes. stay. Like, and also maybe come to uh, here to Oh yeah, that'd today. be fun. <laughs> come visit. So, yeah, you should so, come, come on so the trip can... and uh, go see the, the wildlife. And Have you been to Raja Ampat before? Like that part? Uh, no, no. Raja Ampat, oh. no. Haven't been there. So amazing. It's so beautiful. <laughs> yep, it's gonna be in my, 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 on my uh, bucket list, you know, like because yes. you know it's Raja Ampat. Yeah. Yes. Like wow. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much, Andriana. And I hope you're having a good time there and enjoy your day because now it's already almost dark right over there <laughs> getting close to it's a 5 30 p.m we're getting close to dinner time <laughs> okay then have a good dinner then <laughs> okay thank you very much Andriana. thank you thank you so much Bye. <laughs>